I cleaned away the blood of the psychiatrist. As I did so, I felt such empowerment. Her blood trickled through my fingers, but at the same time I felt such rage. I could not tell whether the rage was due to my taking another life, or whether it was why I needed to take a life. What was I becoming? I took a lifeless body up to my bedroom. I placed it on the ground, turned my CD player on, and Orf o Fortunana, Camina Burana, it was that not only to my mood and my dastardly deed, but also to drown out the noise of me ripping up my floorboards, which I did with relative ease. My shirt blood-stained I removed, the hair all over my ma my back flew over my head and flew back in the wind, coming in through the curtained bedroom window. My small haircut brushed forward too, being pushed by this little breeze of nature. It did not stop me lifting the psychiatrist's body up and then down to the ground next to my other victims. I nailed the floorboards back down. As I did so, I felt a sense of deja vu that I had done this before or knew I was going to do. I wiped my blood-stained hands clean on my hairy chest and stood up and walked to the curtain window which was flapping in the wind. I walked through the curtain closed to the window which was wide open and looked out upon my world. It was empty and dark. Light shone in the distance and I reckoned people were out, but all I could see were their shadows, nothing distinct. Down below me was the empty path, full of rubbish in the gutters being pushed by the wind. To the heavens I saw the bright full moon turn blood orange, and I knew truly that this was the picture of my world, a dark and lonely place where no one would wish to tread. And yet, here I found myself, and as much as I wanted to fight any side of goodness left within me, I knew that the path I'd chosen had no turning back that it would go on till it met with its final deadly end. I cried looking at that moon which disappeared by a thick, dark, thick cloud which had been looming on the horizon for some time. My tears fell and mixed with the blood on my shirt and chest, and I felt a sense of pain that no man should feel. I cried for myself for what had made me this way, how I wished life could have been different as my tears ran I felt memories of my childhood, how before I was five it was such fun that the memory shattered when my father came along, when he inflicted upon me, how his actions had caused me to cause pain to my world, how I knew there was no right to come from what I would do or become. How I cried for killing my mother as I thought of her, I saw in my mind's eye of the cellar, but I was hiding the shadow of crying for her death talking to a man tied up who I let go, but as I turned to face me, his face I did see clearly. It was as if the moon lit it up in this living vision, for it was not a man at all, it was a psychiatrist. What was this mixed-up scene I was seeing, and yet it felt as old as time, and had only occurred within a few hours. I pulled myself away from the window. I would not look upon this world again from that window. I spent that night cementing the window shut, it was very apt, I thought, that this, my tomb of my victims, should be the very room in which I slept as a child, where I had been molested, and where now I had buried my parents, the man who didn't give me a job, who I unburied also from his grave, Klondike Cracker, the man I never murdered, and now the psychiatrist. I went out that night, and was accosted by a tramp, who I sat with sharing his liquor, whilst he drank himself into a stupor, of which he would, would regret. For there is nothing better than alcohol for taking any away the senses of man, and whilst I let this thin liquid do its job, I released as recompense from his thin red liquid and let him die slowly in his sleep, unable to stop his wound from weeping, a man all alone, as dirty as the gutter, and I sat with him watching the blood trickle and once it was all gone, and he had breathed his last breath, I took him on my back and walked him to my house, 
And whilst I did, people passed me on the street, patted me on the back for doing a charitable deed. They foolishly thought I was carrying him to his safety. And yet, all I was doing was carrying him to his grave.